it's about time for us to start preparing for deploying our blog to DigitalOcean. Everything is set up, but um, I guess there is some stuff we still need to do. Like for example, we want to create a special user for the deployment. Now, yes, we could use the same user that we use for administering the system, but best practices uh, basically tells us that we want to create a new user for each type of deployment, or at the very least, a user that doesn't have pseudo access that we're going to give for the automated deployment capabilities. And that's just in case somebody is somehow able to get in. Uh, they at least don't immediately have pseudo access. They're going to have to work a little bit harder to like, you know, get themselves root access. Now, that being said, if somebody is able to get into a system, things are pretty much over and it's it's done, um, which is why we spend so much time trying to lock down like SSH and everything else. And this is going to be an alternate way of doing that. So let's start by creating our deploy user. Um, here I am on the actual DigitOcean droplet. We're going to do our add, let's see, sudo add user. Um, okay, so, uh, I need to add user and then name of it. Let's call this, uh, we'll just call this the deployer. So uh, I need to give it my password and okay so password for deployer i'm going to give it okay there we go and then i don't really care about any of this information we've created this user so we can actually switch over to it uh, we can even see this user in slash home there it is this is the deployer now we can't SSH into deployer because we verified that you can't SSH in using username and password. So this user can't actually get in yet. We're going to have to create a key for that to work. Let's go ahead and uh, and create the key over here. So this is my own personal computer on my desk. Uh, I'm going to do another SSH key gen uh, dash T and then I want the uh, the ED25519, and that's it. Um, I do need to tell it to go into slash home, folks, sage, ID ED25519, and then I'm just going to name this like deployer tutorial. And then last time when we created a key, we gave it a passphrase for ultimate security. Basically, if somebody still gets that key, we don't want them to be able to actually just use it without having to also break the password. Well, this time we're going to be running this key in a CI CD system and we can't, there, there's no interaction to like give it the passphrase. And if I'm just going to like put the passphrase in the same location that the, the, the key is in, then it's kind of worthless to have a passphrase. So we're just going to have none. So empty for none. There we go. It's going to give us this one. Uh, normally, you would not want to show this part over to it. Uh, so uh, I will be like creating a new one later for that. But let's go ahead and show off how we can then give this over to the remote one and get it uh, locked down. So I want to now um, print out the public key that we're going to put into the authorized keys in our DigitalOcean droplet. So we're going to do a cat dot ssh uh, id ed ed uh, this is our deployer tutorial dot pub here that is and back over to here let's switch user over to well this user i'm going to do a sudo su uh to what did we call this a uh, deployer Okay, so we're here as deployer. We can tell we're in our home directory. We have no .ssh folder, so let's go ahead and create one. So uh, make dir.ssh. Uh, we also have to make sure that this .ssh is the correct permissions. It, it is owned by us, that's good, but its permissions are way too permissive. So we have to change that. So we're gonna do a chmod uh, 700 dot ssh 
and that's much better. So let's see the end there. And there's nothing in here. We need to create a file named authorized keys. So I'm just going to vim authorized keys. And I can just paste this in. And this is technically a very legal authorized key file. However, if I if I do attempt to now SSH in as this, so let's just do an SSH. Um, we have to do a give it the identity file of what this is. This is the dot SSH ID ED uh, the deployer tutorial key. And then uh, I want to go into deployer at, and then I need to give it the IP address. Okay. I'm just in. I'm able to get in without a passphrase. Well, we kind of knew that was going to happen, but I, I also want to lock this down. I want to make it so that this user cannot access a terminal or otherwise known as a, a PTY. So let's figure that out. I want to do, I'm going to actually do the open a manual page on the server side, just to make sure I'm opening up all the information that this droplet is actually using. So I'm going to do a uh, man um, authorized keys. So I want actually to open a manual page for that entire file. Now it does open up a man page for SSHD, but we notice that's the eighth manual for this. Okay, so I want to just come down here until I find authorized keys. And here it is, authorized keys file format. So we notice that this says here that it's options, the key type, the key, and then a comment. Well, right now we have the key type, the key, and a comment. That's what was given to us that we were able to, to paste in. What we want to do is give it some options. And so here's a list of all these options that we want. Uh, I want to come down to no PTY prevents a TTY allocation. Uh, a request to allocate a PTY will fail. OK, well, that sounds pretty good. So let's do no PTY. Uh, so I'm going to X out of here. We're going to Vim this again. And at the very beginning of this line, we're going to do this no PTY space, save that. And let's just go ahead and try to connect once again. Well, that's interesting. Look at that. I get this information, but look at this. PTY allocation request failed. I, I I have like information about it, but like if I try to like run commands, I can't do anything. Like nothing's working. The only thing I can do is this control C. So that's a good first step. Let's see what other things we can do for uh, locking ourselves down. This uh, this command is is going to be super interesting. We're going to definitely work with with that. Uh, we can lock it down from a from to make sure it's coming from a very specific location. If you do know the IP address the where where it's coming from, that actually is uh, it can be really good. I don't know if GitHub Actions is actually has like a same use the same host or IP address all the time. So I'm not I'm going to leave that blank for right now. Um, okay, so I want, let's see, no port forwarding. Okay. Now I already have a lot of these locked down from SSH config, so I don't need to worry about it too much. Like for example, we already have XXX1140 turned off, so I don't need to worry about that here. Uh, and uh, I don't think there's anything else in here. Here's some examples for how this works. So I think I think we're we're good here. Now, what this restrict? Let's let's take a look at restricts. Enable all restrictions, disable port, agent, and X1114, as well as disabling PTY allocation and execution of oh, their RC file. And any if any future restriction capabilities are added to authorized keys files, they'll be included in a set. 
Let's do that. Restrict sounds much better than that entire no PTY. So we're going to vim this again. And we're going to just come back here and change this to restrict. And let's try connecting in again. And it's the exact same thing. I can't actually do anything. I can't connect in. I can't can't do that. I get this. Uh, I get our our message of the day, but that that's fine. So excellent. We've locked that down. However, the key is useless if can't actually do something. So what I really want to do is create a script and then have that essentially be run as a command. And basically, uh, that's all this key can do is then just run this command. Let's uh, let's go ahead and head over. We're in deployer right now. Going to head over into its home directory, and I'm going to create a uh, a new file. So we're just going to vim. Let's call this like deploy.sh. So the first thing we're going to give it a shebang for it to know where bash is. And uh, let's just have it be like, you know, an ls dash al. That's that's what this script is going to do to begin with. Um, I do have to for this deploy, give it execution access. I'm going to use the shorthand for this. So that way, just it's it's easier to just add that in. So I'm going to do chmod plus x deploy. And now we can see deploy is executable. I can run this. That's what it looks like. That's what the output looks like when I do run it. OK, uh, let's go ahead and update the authorized keys to have our to just run this deploy command. So we're going to CD back into dot SSH and vim the authorized keys. And uh, we need to do I think it's I think it's a comma. Uh, command equals and then in here it's going to be our slash home uh deployer deploy i think is what we called it that's it sh gonna save that we're gonna come back to here and try connecting in again this time i didn't get this entire message of the day information instead I got a PTY allocation request failed, so it's not allowed to do that. But then it ran this command and then the connection closed. And that's all that happened. So what we've done is we've created this user, we've given it a key that has no passphrase, uh, but then we've locked that key down so that way the only thing this key can do is run this command. Notice I didn't even tell it to run that, that script. It, that's just the only thing it can do. Even if I tried to run something else, like, I don't know, um, ls dash l of like slash. Let's do that. Uh, nope. Do that here. So ls dash l slash. It just ignores that. It doesn't do any of that stuff. It, it just does the command it's allowed to do, which is really nice. It basically allows us to have a key that is un insecure, but still have a little bit of security. Um, and we're going to be using this key with our uh, uh, CI CD system for the actual deployment. So hopefully this is helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.